Hey everyone, Cynix here, and today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about construction, so put on your hard hat. Now, one question that I get asked often is, why don't I use guidelines when I'm doing my art? So I thought it would be fun to just make a quick video about this topic. And there's actually a couple of answers. Initially, it was just because I loved ink. I loved drawing in ink. I didn't like pencils. I didn't like erasing. I just liked laying things down in nice, crisp lines. And that worked well for me. I feel like a lot of the sketches I did when I was starting out had a good look to them, so it helped me out a lot. But of course, as I've transitioned over to a lot of digital art, you could say, well, there's no real purpose to not have guidelines now. But I found out that the more I used guidelines, the more lifeless and dull my art felt. So I realized that not using guidelines actually was promoting me to be more confident and use exciting shape language, which is, in my opinion, extremely important. And I should mention, just as a big disclaimer, this is all opinionated stuff. There's no right or wrong way to do art. This is just my opinion on what looks good. Without having any guidelines to conform yourself to, I find that you can just focus completely on the dynamics of the shapes, angles, and tangents, and silhouettes, and all the appealing stuff, which are vastly important when your main focus is design, which is what this channel is all about. Now to further discuss this topic, I feel like it would be good to bring up the idea of the four stages of competence, also known as the four stages of knowledge, I guess. Stage one is unconscious incompetence, and that means you're not even aware that you're bad at something. It's just not on your radar at all. So for the purposes of me and my videos, I don't care about this demographic because it's people that don't have any interest in art whatsoever. They're not gonna be watching these videos. They're not gonna care about art videos. Stage two is conscious incompetence, and that means you're actually aware that you're bad at something or don't know how to do it well. Um, so it implies that there's some interest in this topic, and once again, for the purposes of these videos, that means you might be watching just as a passing interest. Maybe you enjoy watching art. You're just interested in art, but you haven't really learned to do it yourself. Now, stage three is where things get a little more interesting because that is conscious competence. That means you can do something, but you have to be really aware of what you're doing in order to do it. So this would be like the standard student phase. You're learning all your anatomy. You're using guidelines to construct things because without guidelines, you might not know where things belong. So guidelines are actually very helpful when you're learning. They teach you all the different relationships of objects and anatomy, and they just kind of help you better grasp these concepts. Now it gets a little tricky after stage three because stage four is actually unconscious competence. And that means you can do something so well that you don't even have to think about it anymore. So for the purposes of this video, that means you no longer need guidelines and you can draw anything you might want without having to think too much about it. You can just produce perspective, you can produce anatomy, and it's not really that difficult. And while I may consider myself someone constantly learning and far from having mastered anything, I still think it's important to dive straight into stage four and hope for the best. Maybe someday I can reach some ascended Kim Jong-E level of stage four. But anyway, let me take a quick step back and talk a little bit more about why I think guidelines might be hurting you. So if you're any type of artist that's ever arted in the art world before, uh, you've probably tried to draw a face in this basic manner of drawing a circle and then drawing some guidelines, maybe a chin down there. It's your basic how to draw manga, and I'm sure you did it at some point in your life. I know I did. And uh, in fact, it might have been helpful. It probably helped you learn a little bit more about drawing faces. But you might have found that once you learned this style, that all your faces looked very similar. And the only way you were really differentiating your characters was with overt stylistic choices, crazy clothes, weird hairdos, different colored eyes, and things like that. 
But nonetheless, this is a good way to learn and I recommend you learn in this fashion because knowing construction is very important. Maybe not using this circle and line technique, but definitely you can look at the work of Bridgman or Loomis and see just where constructionism can take you in art because it can definitely take you very far. But once again, those are based on foundations and fundamentals and we want to dive more into design. So in terms of design, these are great for learning, but maybe not for design because once again, we're not seeing the differentiating qualities that we want to see in strong design. So what if instead of focusing on this fundamental foundational stuff, we focused more on aesthetics? If you remembered when I talked about how graffiti could help us become better artists, I want to apply the same lessons of graffiti to things like anatomy. So that means we focus on balance and flow and the way shapes interact with other shapes and try to create interesting silhouettes and personalities to everything we draw. Um, so this is a much more effective way for becoming designers uh, because it lets us really sell our designs with the shape language of our characters or other stuff. Uh, so for instance, on the character on the left, it's drastically different from the one just next to him in terms of shape design. Uh, but nonetheless, our anatomy skills are high enough from doing our basic fundamental guideline understandings that we can just kind of fake our way through it and still make it look convincing. So that's great. And we can use this to all things. It doesn't have to be crazy stylized characters like the ones on the left. Uh, we can also try to apply these basic tenets of balancing and blowing our lines to things that are more realistic, such as maybe the face on the far right. Although I do strongly recommend bringing yourself to extremes before coming back to a more subtle and reasonable approach. I assure you that the best looking realism will always have a subtlety of stylization thrown in there. Anyway, I always use faces as my examples because I feel like we relate to them the most, but I should mention that these lessons of graffiti definitely apply to everything else in the design world from industrial to creature design to anything in between. And I know the most obvious question that might be coming to your mind is what exactly makes a shape appealing or unappealing? I know I keep mentioning things like balance and flow, but unfortunately there's no real comprehensive answer to this question. It's a little bit too vast to really sum up, but I'm gonna just recommend that you follow your instincts and once again, just learn to speak your own shape language because no one's gonna have the same appealing shapes that you might form in your own head. So it's gonna be an individual thing, but I think you should really try to find that language on your own. And just be confident, find your energy. The more energetic you are in the way you approach your shapes, the better they will be, I guarantee it. And of course, the most important reason you might have to break away from guidelines as you get better is to just have fun because it's a lot of fun to not have to worry about guidelines, to not have to conform to anything and just kind of let your shapes flow free. And for the sake of having fun, let's just do some drawing. So I always like to start with head shapes a lot of the time when I'm making faces and characters because I let them speak to me. I just let them flow naturally. If you create a just random head shape, you'll let that kind of dictate to what kind of personality this guy has, what kind of person they might be. Uh, so you can see here, I just kind of make up random shapes, fill them in, weird bean shapes, try to keep them organic. Uh, but I don't know, this guy in the middle kind of looks like that guy from Pawn Stars. But anyway, uh, yeah, use this stuff for faces, use it for anatomy, make all kinds of weird shapes, just have fun with it. Let your real just inner creativity come out with how you make shapes because I feel like that was the main purpose of learning stuff, doing all this guideline anatomy exercises. You are not supposed to just kind of settle in on that. You're supposed to take that and then apply it back to your childlike creativity. So hopefully you'll have a lot of fun with art and uh, I look forward to seeing some of you maybe get away from guidelines a little more. It probably won't help your realistic renderings at all, but let's have fun designing. So that's gonna do it for my anti-constructionist art video. Hopefully you guys found something interesting in here. Maybe you found something you disagree with and that's fine. The important thing is that you have a point of view. 
So thank you for watching. And as always, a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys are great. And I've been putting a fun little nonsense video up there every week. So be sure to check it out if you like wasting money.